Hey, it's been a while, so in this video we'll be moving the camera in response to player input. So that's enough chit chat, let's get right into it. We're going to start with the camera rotation. It will use a mouse, so first thing we'll need to do is capture the mouse by creating a variable to remember our mouse state, and then inverting its exclusion state on each mouse press. So if we click on the window, the mouse gets captured, and if we click again, it gets released. Okay, now we need to create a camera.py file and a camera class to make handling matrices and shader uniforms and stuff a bit easier for ourselves. We'll need it to take our shader and the window's width and height. I'm just going to import math and matrix here for later. Then we can move the matrix creation and shader location finder code from our main file to here. Now, before we go any further, a little refresher on how our angles work. To simplify things a bit and make me seem smarter than I actually am, I'm going to be using the circle constant tau instead of pi. All it is is 2 times pi, but it makes expressing angles a bit easier and more intuitive. Here we have the top-down view of a player situated at the origin of our graph and facing the positive z direction. The zero angle, so that means the angle with a measure of zero radians, points towards the positive x direction, and increasing angles go counterclockwise. So that means our player's x rotation angle is tau over 4 radians when forwards, increases when looking left, and decreases when looking right. A bit counterintuitive at first, but you'll get the hang of it. As for the player's y rotation, it starts at 0 radians when looking forwards, increases when looking up, and decreases when looking down. We can now create two vectors to hold the position and rotation information of our camera, and create an update matrices function with the matrix code from our draw function. Be sure to replace the translate and rotate function arguments with the camera position and rotation. Keep in mind that this needs to be negative, because if you remember from episode 4, we're technically moving the scene around the camera and not the camera around the scene. The one tricky part here is that the z-coordinate needs to be doubly negative, in other words positive, because of something called normalized device coordinates, or NDC for short. I won't go into too much detail on that now, but feel free to check the description if you want to read more about it. We also need to make the y rotation components doubly negative and subtract tau over 4 from the x rotation components for that same reason. Now we quickly clean up the temporary variables left in main.py and can move on to creating the camera object and updating it. Don't forget to update its width and height each time the window is resized. We can run it now to see if everything is still working and it looks fine. Now comes the fun part. We can add an on mouse motion function, check if the mouse is indeed captured, create a temporary sensitivity variable, and add the mouse's delta x and y values multiplied by the sensitivity to each component of the camera's rotation vector respectively. If you paid attention earlier, you'll know that we need to make this negative because if we look leftwards, our delta is negative, but our x rotation angle is supposed to increase, so we need to make our delta positive. Finally, we need to clamp the y rotation to make sure our player doesn't snap his neck. To do this, I'm going to use the min and max functions to make sure our rotation angle doesn't go under a quarter circle or negative negative tau over 4 radians, and doesn't go over a quarter circle, or positive tau over 4 radians. Running this produces a bit of an unexpected result. It makes for a fun little orbiting camera, but what we want is something in first person. The way we can change this is simply by rotating our scene before we translate it. If you think about it long enough, it'll make sense. Then we need to make another list in our init function to hold the current state of movement input. With the onkey press and onkey release functions, we can change this depending on what key is pressed. So if I press the W key for example, I add 1 to the Z input, and when I release it, I subtract 1 from it, making it 0. But we only want this to happen when our mouse is captured. To change our camera position depending on the input, we can create an update camera function, which we can call in our main files update function after zeroing out our input list if the mouse is not currently captured. This will prevent any funny business when unfocusing the window while pressing a key. In it, we can define a temporary speed variable and create a multiplier variable. First, we can try changing the vertical position, and then we can finally move on to moving our camera on the horizontal plane in relation to our inputs and rotation. To do this, I need to get an angle in which to move my camera. The first obvious part to this angle is the rotation of our camera. Then I'm going to add the result of this special function called ATAN2 with the Z component and then the X component of our input as its arguments. If you know basic trigonometry, then you'll know that, in this triangle, the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. If we take the arc tangent of both sides, we end up with theta equals the arc tangent of z over x. This is very nice because it means that we can get the angle to any point on the plane, regardless of its distance to the origin. Now this is cool and all when x is strictly positive, but it kind of falls apart when we go negative, since if, for example, z and x are both negative, we have no way of knowing if the angle is here or over here. So to make life a bit easier, some very smart people most likely wearing fancy suits invented the ATAN2 function, a piecewise defined function that looks a bit like this. This solves the aforementioned problem, and now we can truly get the angle of any point anywhere on the plane. You may be wondering why we'd need to use such a function when the x and z components of our input can only be in one of nine distinct states for the moment. But the nice thing about this is that if you want to use an analog input method, such as a joystick, you just need to plug its values into the ATAN2 function over here. You wouldn't even need to normalize it or anything. The keen-eyed among you may have realized that we need to subtract tau over 4 radians from our angle 
since our reference for forward movements is the zero angle, which is obviously not what we want since this is to our right. Now that we finally have our angle, we can take the cosine of our angle, multiply it by a multiplier, and add that to the x component of our position. Then we can do the exact same thing but with the sine of our angle or the z component. One last thing we have to do is check that the x and z values of our input aren't both equal to zero, as if you recall, that's an undefined case of a tan 2. Et voilà, we can now move around our scene in three dimensions.